Hello YouTube, D. Badri here. Um, so I just bought this spot welder uh, off of AliExpress. I paid about $150 so it'd get here a little quicker. And um, I saw it on YouTube and uh, some guy was uh, doing spots with the thing. Didn't say how thick his nickel was, uh, but it was looked like it was doing pretty good uh, with the spots that he was getting. So I thought, hmm, that's kind of interesting. A Chinese spot welder that might be worth having. So anyway, I bought one. And uh, let's go through the physical things first, and then we'll go through the menu stuff next. So the first thing I want to show you is the power supply. So here's that. Whoops, it's pulled out of the wall. The uh, cord on the thing is 18 inches long. That's super short. Let me plug that back in again. Yeah, it's there it is, right there. That's the whole damn thing. It's really, really short. <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, it says on here that it is 12 volts and 10 amps. Anyway, it's it's very light, so it's uh, going to be a very cheap power supply. Um, it is a switching power supply, which is also why it's very light, but still, you know, good one's got some beef to it. And that one is very light. So it comes in back here. Uh, there is this little DC to DC converter, so there's a little chip underneath here. You've got a smoothing cap coming in and a smoothing cap going out, and this is programmable. Uh, so whatever you set battery or voltage settings to, it's going to make that for the uh, for the super caps. So right now mine's set to 5.4 volts I think so it's going to be distributing 5.4 volts across the super caps. Alright, um, over here so this is a bunch of resistors probably can't see it too well up underneath there but uh, there's some capac or some uh, MOSFETs rather um, but uh, this bank of resistors and this bank of resistors, they are, those are all in parallel, those are all in parallel, and then they're a series with each other. And these are the balancing loads for the super caps. So, you know, if you have the thing set to, like I have it right now, 5.4 volts, and then I go, oh, hey, let's turn that down to 5.2 volts. Well, these guys get turned on um, in parallel across the super caps, and so we start draining them. And then they get quite warm. They really need a heat sink on them, because uh, they get really warm. <clears throat> anyway, uh, next thing is uh, this screw. There is two more, one about right here and one about right there. And then there's a standoff here and two more. Uh, those are the current paths from this DC to DC down to the super cap board. So you can see that standoff right there and it's inside heat shrink. And then there's other standoffs here that are also inside heat shrink. They're, they don't have any electrical path in them. But uh, yeah, the standoffs are used for uh, conducting from one place to another. Um, and then, of course, uh, this board right here, uh, you can see one of the leads uh, for the uh, weld tips is in there, and the other one is on the bottom board. So uh, the current paths from those are all you know copper that is soldered down to the super caps or the MOSFETs. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's pretty solid. This connector right here, that is your foot pedal. And then that goes down to my foot pedal, which I bought on there. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the little knob here, uh, that interface, and the LCD is pretty easy to use. Talk about that in a bit. Uh, I don't know how you can see that down there. Yeah, you can kind of see it. There is a row of MOSFETs there. You can see them inside there. And there's another row in there. They are labeled as um, Infineon MOSFETs. I forget the model. 17 or 1437 something like that I could be completely wrong on the number but uh, there is a number of them in there uh, let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine so 18 of them uh, all in parallel uh, my thinking is is that they're probably very high um, RDS MOSFETs in other words the internal resistance of the MOSFETs is pretty high and that's probably why there's so damn many of them in parallel uh, and then of course they're probably some crappy ass thing, um, probably not even real Infineon MOSFETs, and so you have to have a lot of them in parallel to even handle the current that they're going to deal with, and to do so without a lot of resistance. And that may be why it is that this thing simply doesn't deliver enough current to be able to weld 0.3 millimeter. So uh, anyway, I, I may take this thing apart. Um, I have much better MOSFETs, I can guarantee you. I've, I have a bunch of legitimate MOSFETs that are, you know, absolute top tier, lowest uh, internal resistance, things like that. And I may swap out every last one of those things and see what happens. See if this thing can really consistently weld 0.3 millimeter or not. Uh, and those MOSFETs are going to make a big difference in that. Um, and also the ESR of the super caps. So, yeah, they're 100 microfarad. 
Um, but uh, there, there's eight of them in parallel, not 16 in parallel. So this is not a 1600 farad super cap spot welder. No, it's an 800 farad super cap spot welder. Um, total capacitors, if they were all in parallel, which they are not, then yes, it would be 1600 farads. But um, the way it's laid out right now with a bank of eight, another bank of eight, and then they are in series, well, that's still only 800 farads, not 1600. So good job, China. You know, got to love your bullshit because, dang, you guys pull that shit all the time. Don't know why you bother. But, you know, I, I call that being dishonest. Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. Just say what something is. Why, why do you have to exaggerate? Why do you have to blow smoke? But they do all the time. I mean, uh, you buy an LED flashlight or whatever, it's going to have like 10,000 lumens. It's like, yeah, um, really good Cree LEDs make like, say, oh, 3,000 lumens. So no way your LED that's from China and is shitty and doesn't work half as good, no way is it 10,000 lumens. <clears throat> anyway, I'm ranting. Okay, so uh, this number up here... Um, that pulse one, as you can see, I've got it set to 50 milliseconds, uh, and that's because I have been spot melding, spot welding 0.15 millimeter. Um, I've looked at other people's videos, and they say they have this like at 20, and they have this like at 10, and um, I can't say that I got very good results. So yeah, I had to turn those numbers up. In fact, uh, this one here, I set it up to maximum um, because I was trying to spot weld 0.3 millimeter. And I had this also set to 99 milliseconds, and that was the only way I could get that to weld. And even then, a lot of the welds were not very good. Okay. Uh, this number right here, if there was a value there, say like 0.5 seconds, then um, the weld leads, uh, when this thing detects that uh, they are touching something or touching each other, it'll give a f half a second delay, and then it'll pulse the MOSFETs and do a weld. And then this number over here, uh, as long as that short maintains, then it's going to pause then, like 30 milliseconds here, and then it's going to do another weld. Um, of course, if you pull the weld leads off again, so this opens, so that the, they open up again, then you're going to get the 0.5 seconds or whatever you set in there. Uh, that's all fine and dandy if you have something where you've got, uh, I don't know, like one of those ready-made sheets, you know, the grid pattern kind of stuff, and it's already laid out perfectly on, across all your cells, and uh, you just may need to make a bunch of welds and not do anything and they're all and everything's all there it's all secured down you don't have to make sure of anything at all and you're just going weld 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 i suppose that's fine um however in this less than ideal world that we all live in that's really the case your weld leads move um your nickel isn't lined up whatever uh, and so I don't use the auto setting. Um, my K weld, which is a much better spot welder than this will ever think about being, uh, it has that auto weld option too. And I have that thing turned off and I use the foot pedal because that way, you know, if my weld leads move, the nickel moves, whatever the situation is, isn't exactly how I want it. Guess what happens? Nothing <laughs> until I hit the pedal. Then it welds. So yeah, I always turn that stuff off. I don't like it, and I don't like it any better on this one either. It's uh, it's more of a hassle factor to me than anything else. So let's go over to system settings. All right, so uh, this first option here, auto, maybe somebody can post in the comments what that does. I don't know. I haven't been able to figure it out. I set it to set or not set, and the spot welder seems to behave exactly the same. So I, I don't know what it does. Uh, does auto like auto balance the um the the super caps or something like that? Your guess is as good as mine. Um next option down. Uh <laughs> yeah, max charge current. <clears throat> so let me talk about my K weld for a second. Uh so I have super caps on that too. Uh and each one of those is um uh, a little bit over their eleven hundred uh farads. Um so it's it's two five hundred and sixty uh, farad uh, super caps by, by Maxwell in parallel and then two more in series so you know 1100 ish ish um, farads worth of super cap and they're Maxwell's and their ESR is really low so they're gonna dump current like nobody's business and then of course the MOSFETs that are in the K weld too are again top-notch MOSFETs they're not some Chinese knockoff they're very very good top tier MOSFETs so no limitations as far as the super caps or, or uh, MOSFETs are. All right, um, and because of that lovely feature and the fact that my weld speed is reasonably quick uh, once I get going, 
um, I run out of juice in my super caps if, uh, if I don't have enough charge current going into them. So when I first built it, I started at 50 amps of charge current, and that wasn't fast enough. I could run down the super caps. And so then I bought a second 50 amp um, max meanwhile power supply, put those two in parallel so that I now have 100 amps of charge current going into my super caps all the time. And that is able to keep up with my spot weld rate. Um, so this thing, with its maximum of 10 amps, yeah, there is no way in hell, <laughs> just to be blunt about it, there is literally no snowball's chance in hell ever <laughs> that this thing is going to be able to keep up with my not very fast, non-professional, hobby-grade um, spot weld speed rate. It's just not. 10 amps charging is just not going to do it. And so why I would ever set this lower than 10 amps? Your guess is good as mine. If I, if I had this thing hooked up to a car battery or, you know, a, a, bank, a, a bank of lithium-ion cells, lipo, whatever, you know, the power supply, 10 amps, I'm not going to do anything less ever. <laughs> um, you'll notice the uh, super cap voltage, so it shows 2.7 volts. These are uh, whoever the heck green cap is. Um, I've never heard of the brand before. I'm just going to say they're probably Chinese, right, since everything else here is. Uh, in which case, probably these super caps are not going to tolerate over voltage very much. Uh, Maxwell's uh, on my uh, K weld, I run those super caps at 3.1 volts. So, yeah, it's a little over, and they have no problem. They've been doing that for several years. So, pretty happy with that. Uh, you can see this thing's fairly new, it's only got 35 spot welds on it so far, and ling ang bleh, language is obviously English. So, let me get out of this menu. Go back out. All right, we already talked about those. Let's go over to voltage setting. As you can see, oh, wait, it's not all the way up. God forbid. Yeah, I, I want this thing running at its maximum capabilities because it uh, lacks the juice. <laughs> yeah, a little bug in the firmware right there. Um, yeah, I've got it set to English, pretty sure. So why is it showing me Chinese? Uh, here's my cells. So. Um, they are charging. Yeah, you can see the LEDs blinking over here. So they're charging, bringing those babies up. Don't know why it says 5.59 volts, but whatever. Uh, and why does that one say 2.79 and 2.79? I didn't select that. Yeah, see? 5.4. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Hey, I didn't hit button. Yeah, let's go back. There we go. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, there we go. I, I guess that was a glitch. <coughs> what? Chinese stuff that's perfect? That's not perfect? That's a shock. Uh, right. So anyway, um, it, it works well enough for 0.15, probably for 0.2. Um, but is this the best spot welder ever? Uh, for 150 bucks, it's pretty good. Uh, is it as good as the K-Weld? Well, hell no, not even close. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a much lighter duty spot welder by a lot. I would definitely not say this is anywhere near in the bar ballpark of a professional spot welder like a K-Weld is. Uh, this is a, you know, a not too badly priced, uh, reasonably functional spot welder. Definitely a hell of a lot better than a Sunco. Had one of those too, and that was absolutely a steaming piece of shit. I uh, would never recommend a Sunco to anybody. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is definitely a better unit than a Sunco. It's it's got better programmability in it. You know, it's got, you've got more control over the uh, spot weld current, things like that. And those are all good features. Um, if anything, that I would like to have seen is that these were not milliseconds. Instead, they did something like say joules. Uh, you know, that way I could say, oh yeah, well I set this to 50 joules on my K weld, and I set this to 50 joules over here, and let's do a side by side comparison of that same spot weld and well I can't because <laughs> I don't know what 50 milliseconds uh, reflects or whatever you know, it's a time right that's not a that's not a power um, but uh, yeah it's uh, it's okay I wouldn't say it's awesome I'm not super impressed I'm definitely more impressed than I, w I am with a K weld or I'm sorry with a Sunco which are just crap um, but is this thing awesome like a K weld well no <laughs> not even close um, so the last thing to talk about so here is the weld pens and they work well enough I haven't done a lot of welding with it but but they work uh, they're comfortable in the hands they don't get too warm 
Not that they would anyway, because you can't weld that fast. But, uh, yeah, they, they work well enough. So I'm fairly happy with it, considering how I paid 150 bucks. Would I say somebody who just wants a really lightweight, hobby-grade spot welder, uh, would I recommend it to them? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, if you're not wanting to be super good or fast or anything, then yeah, this will do fine for you. Uh, definitely a shitload better than a Sunko.